Hello and Namaste. Welcome to Temple's Books and Science. Today I want to talk to you about an exquisite masterpiece, the Ganga Dara of the Meghnath Swami Temple in Tirumaichur. Before I explain this particular sculpture, I want to tell you more about the Ganga Dara form of Lord Shiva, which is a popular depiction in many ancient Shiva temples. Here is a 1300 year old Pallava era Ganga Dara from Mamallapuram. This one from Elephanta is around 1500 years old. Gangadhara literally means the god who held the Ganga. The Gangadhara form of Shiva depicts the moment when Ganga descends from the heavens into Shiva's matted locks. The descent of Ganga is a famous story which appears in several Puranas including the Mahabharata and Ramayana. There was once a king called Bagiratha who was an ancestor of Lord Rama. Bagiratha's four fathers were cursed by Kapila Rishi who burned them to ashes. Their souls could not ascend to heaven because of this curse. Bagiratha's guru tells him that only the waters of the celestial river Ganga can cleanse his ancestors of their sins. At that time Ganga was only flowing in the heavens. She was called Akash Ganga, the Ganga of the heaven. So Bagiratha gives up his kingdom and embarks on a mission to bring Ganga down to our world. He goes to the forests of Himalayas and does penance for a thousand years to appease Ganga. She is pleased with his penance. She appears before him and tells him that she is willing to come down to earth but warns him that there is a danger in this. When she descends from the sky to the earth, the force of her fall would be so great that the earth may break and shatter to pieces. She advises him to seek Shiva's help as he is the only one capable of absorbing such a force and preventing the earth from being harmed. Bagiratha then does a severe penance for Shiva without consuming food or water for a year. Shiva is pleased with Bagiratha and agrees to help him. As Ganga falls from the heavens, he captures her in his matted hair and lets her down gently. The Gangadhara form of Shiva depicts this instant when Shiva captures the Ganga in his hair. Since Ganga is the most sacred river and her descent to earth is such a momentous occasion, this is a common image in many ancient Shiva temples. What makes the Ganga Dara of Meghnath Swami temple special? In this image, the artist masterfully captures Parvati's reaction to Shiva providing a permanent residence to another woman in his head. He beautifully represents her reaction with empathy and humor. Look closely, you can see Shiva has unfurled a lock of his hair. Ganga is depicted as a young girl with her hands folded and she appears to have just landed on his hair. The curve of his hair also resembles the current of the river. Shiva is holding his hair with just two fingers. The sculptor is indicating that stopping this huge force is such an effortless task for Lord Shiva. Now look at his wife Parvati. She is furious with Shiva for doing this. She appears to be walking away from him. Notice her feet. They are turned as though she is stepping away from him. Shiva is trying to pacify her. Even as he is holding Ganga in one hand, his other hand is cradling her chin and trying to calm her down. His left hand is wrapped around her shoulders, which she appears to be prying away. What makes this Ganga Dara a true masterpiece is the expression on Parvati's face. If you look at Parvati's profile from Shiva's side, she appears to be sulking. Her lips are pursed in a pout. But if you look at her from the front, there's a sly smile on her face, as though she's just teasing Shiva. It is a cute domestic scene which accurately captures the dynamics of their relationship. Shiva and Parvati are equal partners in a true sense. They are friends, they are intellectual equals, they are equally powerful. They are Ardhanarishwara, equal halves of each other. Parvati is not known to sit quietly and accept whatever Shiva does without questions. Can you imagine the skill to create such a masterpiece in stone? 
Unfortunately, we don't even know the name of this brilliant sculptor. You can see a similar Gangadhara in Gangai Konda Cholapuram, which like the Meghanatha Swami temple is another Chola temple. This sculpture too has all the elements of that image. There is Shiva with his matted lock in one hand holding Ganga and Parvati walking away furiously and Shiva trying to pacify her. Because this image is not covered in clothes, you can clearly see Parvati's feet stepping away from Shiva. While this too is a beautiful sculpture, this one is a real masterpiece. The stone has sprung alive with so many emotions like love and humor and playfulness. I cannot conclude this discussion without talking about another masterpiece depicting the descent of Ganga. While Gangadhara's sculptures focus on Shiva's role in the descent of Ganga, there's another magnificent sculpture in Mamallapuram which celebrates Bhagiratha, the king who gave up his kingdom and did penance for thousand years to bring down the Ganga from heavens. It is because of him Ganga is also called Bhagirathi. This is one of the most famous sculptures of Mamallapuram, popularly known as Arjuna's penance. Most historians believe it is the story of Ganga's descent. At the center of the sculpture, you can see Ganga flowing down the Himalayas. Every figure in this busy sculpture seems to be watching Ganga in awe as she descends down the mighty Himalayas. Notice the hand gestures of all these figures in the sculpture. This is called Vismaya Hasta. It symbolizes awe and wonder. They are all looking at Ganga in awe and wonder. It indicates that they are seeing something which they have never seen before. She has just descended from heavens and flowing down the Himalayas for the first time. All the trees and wildlife that is depicted on the sculpture accurately reflects the vegetation and wildlife of the Himalayas. It should be noted that this sculpture is located more than 2000 kilometers from Himalayas and it is over 1300 years old. It is a mystery how these artists got such accurate information. Did they travel all the way to Himalayas, make sketches and bring them back for reference? We will never know. Apparently, the contours of this natural lock on which this image is carved is such that when it rains, the water would accumulate on the top and flow down the central niche that is Ganga. Imagine what a sight that would have been. This water route has now been sealed off to prevent damage to the sculpture. Notice the scene in the top right hand side of Ganga. There is an emancipated figure standing on one leg and doing penance. He is Bhagiratha. Notice his hollowed out cheeks and his rib cage. Every bone is visible like a person who has been doing penance for a long time without food or water. The tall figure next to him is Shiva. Shiva is surrounded by his companions, the Shivaganas. Shiva's left hand is open and pointed down. This gesture is called Varada Hasta, which symbolizes the granting of boons. They are the only two figures in the sculpture that are not facing Ganga. Instead, they are facing us, the audience. Shiva has granted Bhagiratha's boon and as a result, Ganga is flowing in the Himalayas. That is the theme of this sculpture. In the Mahabharata, there is a story of Arjuna doing penance for Shiva to get his weapon, the Pashupatastra. There appears to be a huge weapon in Shiva's hand and so it was initially assumed that it was this scene from the Mahabharata that is depicted in the sculpture. That is why this sculpture was originally called Arjuna's Penance and the name still persists till today. That's it from me. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and press the bell icon for reminders. Please share it with your friends and like-minded people. Until next time, Namaste.